Welcome to Sparks of History, where Jewish history and world history meet. We are extremely honored to have with us today Harav Yoshua Hartman. Harav Hartman is a internationally noted author, lecturer, and educator. Rabbi Hartman currently serves as Rosh Beit HaMedrash at Hasmonean School in London. Rav Hartman was a student and disciple of Rav Yitzhak Hutner, Hutner of Blessed Memory. And Rav Hartman is the author of the multi-volume Machon Yerushalayim edition of the Maral of Prague's works. And today we will be discussing the 16th century life, legacy, and works of Morenu Yehuda Lau ben Betzalel, the Maharal. Rabbi Hartman, thank you so much for joining us today. Rabbi, it's a pleasure to be here. And whatever we could do, Lahagdil Torah Ulahadira will be a merit for Rosh Chodesh Elul, which is starting tomorrow night. Amen. Thank you. Um, just, just to get started, um, in summary, the Maharal's major writings. Meaning the Svarm that the Maharal published? Yes. The Maharal wrote nine Svarm over a course of 22 years, from 1578 to 1600. The first cipher that he published was the Gur Arye, which is a commentary on Rashi. And, not, and from that point of view, it's one. it was the second commentary that we know that Am Yisrael was using, meaning the one that preceded him was Rabbi Mizrahi, who lived 50 years earlier in Turkey. And then the Maral wrote a sefer on Chumash Rashi. He's always referring, if not directly, indirectly to Rabbi Mizrahi. Why did the Maral write his first sefer about Rashi? It, it's, uh, he never explained it, but it's really Pasha when you think about it. The Maral dedicated his life to one aspect, the one aspect only, to show the wisdom and the oimek of Chazal. Uh, then it's up has to be explained, but that's what we'll say just for now. And Rashi is, what's unique about Rashi is that he's a, a Likut of Chazal. Rashi is the most Chazali commentary that exists. So like as if the Mara is telling us, I would like to show you who Chazal are. Let's start with your home court advantage, Rashi. You're familiar with it. And Rashi has a Likut of Chazal. We'll start there. And he wrote, he didn't write an introduction to the Gurari, but there's a title page which he wrote. And he said, mm-hmm. From the known Mamarim of Chazal that Rashi quoted, you could draw a conclusion to the other ones. They're all words of wisdom, umum ain bahem, without any blemishes. So Rashi start, so the first sefer the Mara published was that Sefer Gur Arye. The name Gur Arye means a cub line and a mature line, Gur and Arye, which means that he'll be dealing with the elements of Pshat like any other commentator on Rashi. What, did Rashi, what was Rashi bothered by? What, how did Rashi answer the Kashi of the Ramban? How would he answer the Kashi of the Ramban? And if there's any contradictions in Rashi, etc. But then also he'll use it as a springboard to enter to the Olam HaMachshava of Chazal which is the Arye part. For example, uh, just to bring it out, Rabari, could you, I'll tell you a story that I, as a five-year-old, and let's see what we'll do with it. Uh, one night, Yaakov Avinu was very, very tired. You know, he was so tired because he didn't sleep for 14 years. You know, when we don't sleep one Shabbos afternoon, look how we look like. He didn't sleep for 14 years. So not only did he have bags under his eyes, his whole face was a bag. So he went to sleep. In those days, there were no pillows. So he took stones instead. And the stones started to fight. Each one said, Alai yaniach tzaddik et rosho. And each, each stone said, the tzaddik should put his head upon me. And the Kodesh Bogu told the stones that it's not nice to fight. And he made all the stones into one. Can I say this story over to an intellectual, non-religious Jew, or for that matter, even to a non-Jew, without blushing? Can I, what does it mean, stones are fighting? 
what does it mean that Yaakovinu had this? Did Yaakovinu have this every night? How come these stories didn't happen with Abraham and Yitzhak or Moshe and Aaron? How does this dream bring out what Yaakovinu is about and his whole essence? That's what you need a morale for. And uh, he took Mamre Chazal that Rashi quotes and said, hey, that you understood it like a child when you were a child, that's legitimate. But now that you're an adult and you can think, what, what are Chazal saying here? And that's what he does over and over in the Sefer Gur Arye. Uh, then, by the way, I wrote a little pamphlet of the selective Gur Aryas in each parsha, and I'll be happy to send it free of charge to any of our listeners who would like it. Absolutely. My email address is yh, that stands for Yeshua Hartman, yh at Rabbi Hartman, that's one word, dot net. Whoever would want, bakasha. Excellent. Well, we'll put we'll put, we'll put that on the screen afterwards when after we edit. And how old was the Maharal when he composed that first work, oh, the Gur Arye? According to most opinions, the Maharal was born in 1512, and he died at 1609. So he was 97 years old, which is a very long life in those days. It's like today living till 150, and he was 66 when he started publishing his run. So the whole binion of his Ashkapa was already there. And to a certain degree, all his Yisoyders are already mentioned in short in the Gur'ayi. And then comes a set of a projected six volumes uh, corresponding to each word in the following Pasuk. L'cha Hashem, HaGedula, HaGevura, HaTiferes, V'Hanetzach, V'Ahoid, Kichol, B'Shamayim, U'Va'aretz. And the Sefer Hagdula will be on Shabbos and my Sebrachis. Sefer Hagdurus will be on Yitzhak's Retrime. This is all based on the Maim Chazal and the Gwen Brochus. Uh, Sefer Han, uh, Atifres will be on Matan Torah. Sefer Hanetzach will be on Golos and Geula. Uh, Sefer Ahod will be on Sukkot. And Sefer Shemaim Oretz will be on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. From those six volumes, projected six volumes, we have only three. We have Sefer Gvur Hashem on Pesach Yitzhak Yitzhak and HaGodesh Pesach. We have Sefer Tifer Yisrael on Matan Torah. It's not coincident that it's 70 Prokim, Shivim Polim La Torah. And we have the Sefer Netzach Yisrael on Golos Geula. We do not have the Sefer Hagdula on Shabbos. We do not have Sefer Hoid on Sukkot. And we do not have Sefer Shemai Ba'aretz on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The Maral only once quotes the Sefer Hagdula in the Svarim. He never quoted the other ones. And apparently he didn't, he didn't have the opportunity to, to have printed. It's hard to say that he printed these three Svarim, but they somehow got lost. That's a little bit dachuk, and again, he never mentions them. No, there's no manuscripts or partial manuscripts for no, these, these? No. There's something that we do have instead, which I'll explain, I'll explain in a minute, but we don't have those Svarim. It's known that the Sochot Shabarebbe the Abney Nezer said he'll pay any money in the world if someone could find for him the Sefer Hagdullah on Shabbos. Uh, maybe to bring out the necessity of, of that Sefer, ask, you know, amongst us, show me Shabbos. What is the focus that I should have for the 25 hours of Shabbos? It's very hard to define it. I know when it comes to Pesach, it's Cherus. When it comes to Rosh Hashanah, it's Yom Adin. Comes Yom Kippur, Chuba. What's our focus on Shabbos? I do it, we do it once a week. What's the focus? What's the avoida of Shabbos? Is it Menucha, Emuna, Chant? What is it? No, t t today, today, Chant is Thursday nights already. So you know. <laughs> so it, it it really needs beer. Like what? What? What should I be? What should I be? What's the avoid of Shabbos? And the safe of the Ma would have defined it. Uh, okay, but we do have the other three. So that's like, so to speak, a set on its own. And then there's another kind of set, the Ma'ral's commentary on Pirkei Ovis, which is called Derechaim. 
And then he wrote a sefer called, um, roughly called Musr and Midos, called Nesivos Oilam, which is 33 different paths. Each path is divided to Prakim. <clears throat> In today's edition, it's uh, two volumes called Nitivot Olam. The first Nitiv is Nesiva Toira, and then Nesiva Avoida, Nesiva Deen, Nesiva Emes, Nesiva Emunah, Nesiva Sholom, Nesiva Tshuva, Nesiva Bitochan. Nisim Veloshan Ha'a, Nisim Gunus Chesed, Nisim Koach HaYetzer, 33 of them. And then he uh, he wrote a sefer on, I'm sorry, on the two Moyadim that we have Midra Banan, on Hanukkah called Ner Mitzvah, and on Megillus Esther and Purim called Or Chadash. And like everything is totally bemazel, the sefer Ner Mitzvah is a pretty slim sefer. Hanukkah is eight days. <coughs> I'm sorry. So it's commonly found that people know that sefer, and they finish it every Hanukkah, eight days, a smaller sefer, and they get it. The sefer or Chodesh is a very thick sefer. Purim is only one day. Half of the day we're drunk. So there's very few people that really have a chance to learn the sefer or Chodesh, which is the last sefer we really which the mouth printed. And uh <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess just like Purim, the essence is that it's a hidden yomtiv. The Torah of the Maral is hidden with it. But then comes a sefer, which you could say is the heart of the Maral, and that's called Be'er Hagoyla, where the Maral compiled all the uh, not understood chazals and explained them and divided them into seven categories. We know today that he's answering a, a pamphlet which was published by a Meshuman, meaning a Jew who converted to Christianity, written in Latin. It was published in 1952, in 1552, of course. And there the Meshuman collected about 90 Mamre Chazal with one purpose and one purpose only, to show how ridiculous Chazal are. <coughs> and the Maral is answering that out of the 90 uh, quotations, 82 of them are quoted in the Beragoyla. The eight which are not mentioned is, the, why don't we believe in Bo'iso Aish of Christianity that the Maral could not explain living in a little Jewish quarter in Prague and the next day Chas could be a pogrom. But for example, Chazal say in Sukkah that uh, the eclipse of the moon is a bad omen from Am Yisrael and the eclipse of the sun is a bad omen for Um Sa'olam. So asks this uh, pamphlet, how could it be of an omen? Already then they knew you could predict it in advance exactly when there'll be an eclipse, where there'll be an eclipse, for how long will be the eclipse. For the next thousand years, you could tell where it will be. So how could it be a, a, a bad omen if it's predicted and it's part and parcel of uh, science? I guess Chazal did not know science. And the Maral shows you what Chazal really meant. And when you notice the gap between what the simple superficial understanding which this Meshuman had and what the morale shows when you when you acknowledge that gap you could start dancing in the streets because it's like such a more deeper understanding than taking Chazal in their superficial level and that's those are the nine swarm that we have of the morale again the Gur Arye the first one the three, which are Gvur Hashem, Tiferes Yisrael, Netzach Yisrael. The next two, which are Derech Chaim and Nesivas Oilam. We're up to number six. And then Ner Mitzvah and Chanukah, Or Chodesh and Purim. That's seven and eight. And number nine is the Be'er Hagoyla, which the Maral really dedicated his life to that, explaining who Chazal are. Just in all his other swarm, he took a topic based on Chazal. Pesach, based on Chazal, is Gur Hashem. Matan Torah, based on Chazal, is Tiferes Yisrael. But that Chazal themselves are the topic, that's the Sefer Be'er Goila. Then in the 50s, not so long ago, they discovered here in England the manuscripts of the Maral on the order of the Shas. So that's called Chidush Agodes. Here, for example, Chidush Agodes. Four volumes. This is volume Alec. And the Maral is going according to the Seder Hashas 
explaining the Agodas that he meets on the way. And when he meets a Chazal, a Medrash, or a Gemara, then he already explained in one of his farm, or he says, just look up what I explained in that Sefer, or he'll usually rewrite it and always add a few words here and a few words there, which really add a tremendous clarity to what Chazal, to what the Maral did, uh, meant in his farm. And that was published here in the 50s by the Talmudium of Rav Dessler, and it was, it's a major contribution to the learning of the Maral. Did 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 we know did we know that that existed and was lost or was this like an incredible discovery? What was that found? What in the Bodleian Library in Oxford? Where, where was That's that found? That's a very found? good question. But I guess we we could have known, and I, we did know because in his farm he he, he he makes a reference to what he wrote. He says, "Look what I wrote there. Look what I wrote there." Sham usually means the Chidushi Agodas on that Gemara, and that's four volumes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to it in my in this uh, on this uh, Gilgul, but I but I'm answer, we'll see. It has a little bit less weight. It carries a little bit less weight because it was not published by the Maral himself, um, but it's there, and the Maral makes references to it, and it's a major contribution. Yes, also, we're, we're all were all of the previous farm published uh, books published in the Maral's lifetime. Absolutely. Okay. All the other nine were published in the Maral's lifetime. I'd like to show here an example. I have here the first edition that was published in the Maral's lifetime of the Sefer wow. Netzach Yisrael. Wow. And it's a beautiful print, a beautiful paper. Apparently, as we know, the Maral was a rich man, and he, and they're all, and again, the Sefer Netzach Yisrael, which is about Golis and Geula, the censorship took out very important sentences whenever he makes a reference to Christianity, but it's here. Okay, where so was that published? Is, where was that published? This was published, as far as I remember, in in Prague. In Prague. Okay. And it's not Samach. It's not Samach would be 1588. The, all this firm were published in his lifetime. And the Chidush Agodas, as I mentioned, were dis was discovered here in the 50s. Now, they discovered 75% of it. There's still 25% missing. Maybe Rabari one day will go together there in Oxford and we'll dig it up. It. Let's say he makes a reference, look what I wrote in Brachas. I could imagine Brachas with all that God is there. We don't have it. We don't have the Chidush Agodas and Seder Mayat, excluding Shabbos. Shabbos we do have. But we don't have a Yuma, we don't have a Sukkah, we don't have a Psachim, we don't have an Arabin, we don't have. But we do have from then onwards, the Nashim, the Zikin, that we do have. So we don't have the Sefer of the Maral on Shabbos, but we have Chidusha Agodas on Shabbos. So that's pretty good. Or in the Chidusha Agodas in Boba Kama, he explains the famous Gemara of Lechadoidi, Bov and Etzedi Kroskala, the Gemara of Boba Kama, Daf Lamed Beis, so again, there he will explain a little bit about Shabbos, and here and there he speaks about Shabbos, but we don't have that one sefer on Shabbos. He also wrote Sifre Halacha. Uh, first of all, here I have an example: the Chidushe Maral Prague that was this, printed about two hundred years ago in Halacha on Shabbos Erev and Psachim. We have today also on Bab Mitzia. He wrote also Hagoyes on the tour. <laughs> and we have it on Yerodeo, we have it. And so here and there, there's also Swarm in Halacha, a famous chuba that he wrote about in Naguna. And the Maral was considered a godlador also in Inane Halacha. The Taz in Yerodeo, Simon Kufka of Gimel, who lived about 60, 70 years after the Maral, refers to him as godlador. And he's referring to Inane Halacha, about Yai Nesach. So he really was a legend in his lifetime. And uh, as we, 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 this led a little bit to the story of the golem. Again, if it happened or did not happen, we don't know. There's no scientific proof. Uh, he never mentions it, of course, in his farm. Um, it got known like 150 years after he died, like who kept it a secret for such a long time, so that we don't know. Was there a golem or not? It's a question mark. I once asked that to my Rosh Hashiva Zatzal, 
And like he he didn't answer, meaning we don't know. In my humble opinion, the story of the golem caused damage to the morale because instead of looking at him as one of the deepest thinkers that Amisur will ever produce, he may come across as a kunstmacher who does like uh, tricks. But okay, again, but if he did it or did, we push it don't know. Okay. Well, well Farman, you, you, you mentioned that already in the first work, in the commentary to Chumash and the Gur Arye, uh, we see the Maharal's uh, fundamentals, principles, Yesodos, um, examples uh, of perhaps uh, two or three major fundamentals that are key in understanding the Maharal. Okay. Uh Again, for example, the story that I mentioned before, the idea, I'll bring it up, let's say, if a person wants to know, I'm taking it from a more practical angle, but you'll see somewhere I'm getting at. I, I would like to know, on a scale of 0 to 10, if I'm a tzaddik or not. I really I want to be brutally honest with myself. Let's say 10 is a big tzaddik, 0 not. And I want to do something about it when I'm still alive. I'd like to know if I'm a tzaddik or not. Is there any way I can know it? I guess if I'll do mitzvahs and I won't do averis, I'm a tzaddik. But is there any yardstick or measurement that I could test myself if I'm a tzaddik or not? We can we can ask our wives. <laughs> That's definitely one way. Because the Chidush Yarim said you could bluff everyone, but two, HaKadosh Boko and your wife. True? That's one way how to do it. And I, 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 I want to really, I want to know. The Ma'am gives a key, a, 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 a tool of how does spirituality manifest itself? And he says, spirituality manifests itself in unity and physicality manifests itself in the lack of unity or division. The Jewish people reached the peak of total unity in Matan Torah. It's not a coincidence. They reached their spiritual high in Matantara, and therefore it was manifested in total unity. Like a tree, when you get closer to the trunk, things are one. When you get further away from the trunk, it gets divided to branches, to leaves, to fruits, and so on. Similarly, when things are closer to the root, which is HaKadosh Bochel, things are more one. When things are further away from HaKadosh Bochel, they get divided. As you mentioned, a husband and wife, if they have a spiritual relationship as well, the yud and the ish and the hey and the isha, they become one. And if you take the yud out of the ish and the hey out of the isha, it's esh for esh, it's war. There's no unity. And uh, this is not only amongst different people, but the Maharal would say also amongst yourself. A life of consistency means unity. So every person has his ups and downs. That's what that's what life is about. But like, if the, are the ups and downs within the same ballpark? For example, one day I usually wake up at six thirty. One day I woke up at seven. Okay, so I still make zman Krishma and still zman Tfila. Fine. But if let's say I'm a yeshiva boch, I came home for ben Asmanin, and the first day I wake up for Vasikin to impress my parents how successful was this man. And I learned for eight hours a day. And then the next day, I wake up at 11. And I don't open up a safe for the next week. So here the Ma'am will say, we didn't start yet climbing the ladder of spirituality. Because spirituality is manifested in unity and consistency. And if there's major contradictions in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm in a problem. If there's ups and downs within the realm of normalcy, I'm... I'm in a good place. Or I'm in a better place, called that way. And the good news, by the way, is also another you serve the morale, which the Shinoch already says, that if I'll I'll fake it till I make it, namely, I'll live a life of consistency, even if I'm not there, and like that, I'll get there. And I'll make I'll remove any serious contradictions from my life, and that will help me <coughs> again to reach. Uh, a life of spirituality and closeness to Hakadosh Baruch The stones under the head of Yaakov Avinu had to become one, because Yaakov Avinu was the epitome of spirituality in this world. He's the Av that's called Kadosh, K 
Kedosh Yaakov, like we say in benching, and Kedusha has to be manifested in oneness. However, Leta'ava Yivakesh Nifrad, a Pasuk at Mishle. When people are immersed in Tavis, they get splittered and divided in many different directions. And one place the Maal says that's a Pasuk in Chumash, literally. The Nahar Yotzemi Eden, a river comes out from Eden, Eden, some kind of spiritual place. And then we reached our world, it got divided to four, corresponding to the four directions of the world that we live in. That's one Yisod of the Maral. Another Yisod of the Maral would be the intrinsic, that nothing happens by random. Everything has to have a reason for it. Nothing is just, well, that's how it happened. Uh, for example, Bayes Rishon was destroyed because Gimel Averis Hamuris, and Bayes Sheni was destroyed because of Sinas Chinam. Could it have been the other way around? The Bayes Rishon will be destroyed because Sinas Chinam, and Bayes Sheni because of a desire Gideon Arayis Shmuz Damim? Absolutely not. It had to be that way, and I'll tell you why. If we understand the source, the sources of Bayes Rishon and Bayes Sheni, we'll understand why Bayes Rishon could only be destroyed by Gimel Averis Hamuras, and by Hashem, it could only be destroyed by Sinas Chinam. That Yaakov Avinu has two children, one's a Tzadik, one's a Russia. Yitzhak has two children, one's a Tzadik, one's a Russia. Yaakov Avinu has 12 children, so the ratio, if it would have been kept, should have been six Tzadikim, six Rishayim, and they're all Tzadikim. What happened there? If you have, like, plenty of wives, so the Chinuch gets better? What's the reason by Yaakov Avinu this happened? Is it by random? Of course not. So what is it? That the sifting process is over. And understanding that nothing in our Yiddishkeit is, oh, that's just how it was. The Tefillin Shalyan is one box. The Tefillin Shavosh are four different ones put together. What's the reason for that? Why is it so? Could it have been the other way around. On the head you'll have the four boxes, and on the head you'll have one big box. Of course not. Everything is but with the reason, and this leads to another major yisug, that every ounce of Torah is full of chachma, and nothing can be explained by some kind of practicality or convenience. For example, why is Judaism a maternal religion? Why do you go according to the mother? So I'm sure, Rip Ari, you heard yourself the explanation. It's just easier to follow the mother. She carries the fetus for nine months. The father, we don't know. In some places in the world, Father's Day, Father's Day is a very unclear day. That's not Tyra. That's not just practicalities. There's no wisdom in it. Just this is the easy way out. That's not Tyra. The man will never say those kind of stories. And by the way, Hakim Kahuna and Livia doesn't go through the mother if it's just easier to follow the mother side. And you know what? Even Judaism itself, the Ramban says in Pashas Amor, up to Matan Torah was a paternal religion that went through the father. At Matan Torah, it switched over to the mother. This biological factor that the mother carries the womb did not happen in Matan Torah. So like, taking, you know, these regular explanations that we say on Shalash Shudas by the herring, you know, in those days, that's how it was. And people then, that's what they really felt. He never, not only he brings it or rejects it, he'll just never say it. It, it, it it's, it's a good for a pamphlet on Shabbos and Shul, but it's not really understanding the Chachma of Tyra. Why are some foods prohibited and some not? Here even Rishonim will say it has to do with health. So the man will ask, well, if it's health, go to a doctor and find out what you should eat or not. Do you need a Torah for that? And again, what we mentioned before, is chunk so healthy? So that, that's not the shot. Everything has to be with a, mm, with a checkmate in Havana. Those are uh, three, there's really hundreds of Israelites about the difference between a Yid and a Goy, of the, of the relationship that, that Am Yisrael has with a Kodesh uh, how it's unconditional, the fact when Avram Avinu was chosen, Lech Lecha Me'atzara doesn't say that, that he's a tzaddik. The Ramban's question, by Noach, how come Noach was the only one saved from the flood? It says he was a tzaddik. It says three times. 
But why was Avram Avinu the one chosen? Shtet Gomish doesn't say anything. How do you understand that? Is that the way I introduce a Jewish hero? Why him? Isn't that a terrible omission that the Torah doesn't point out that he's a tzaddik? I, I can just tell you what we're saying. There used to be an advert in Israel, Pam Volvo, Tamid Volvo. Maral, once you get used to his chachma and to his deep way, it's very hard to settle for anything which will be less. Again, there were other G'doyle Yisrael, of course, the Goyim, the Ramchal, the Rizal, of course. But any, like, you know, Gematria stuff to answer, oh, why is that being done this way? To teach you to be humble. He, he didn't go for that. To teach you to be humble, he, he, he didn't necessarily go for that. Uh, the, the easy way out is not uh, one of the ways that Maral uses Rav Harvey, you obviously touched upon this, uh, the Maral's stance regarding Midrash and, and Agada. Uh, is is this in in distinction, contradistinction to the Rambam? The, the, the Maral, was this a new path that the Maral laid out um, in, in understanding Agada and Midrash? Or was there, was he basing himself on some existing tradition already? So he himself, very good question. Apparently, we believe that it's all based on Kabbalah at the end of the day. That's where it all comes from. The moral, his goyness was to bring it out in a philosophical way. And Rav Kuk Satsal called the moral Hamakubal Hafilosof. That's how he called him. It was uh, obviously there's a Masara from Moshe Rabbeinu onwards about Kabbalah, uh, Abdur Achador. Which was kept to Yoidei Chen, Yoidei Sod. The Chiddush of the Maral is that he brought it out in a Derech Nigla. Very few times he quotes the Zara Kodesh openly. Out of the, all the Swarm that I mentioned, maybe like 10 times or 11 times, which is very little, but it's all from there. And those who know Kabbalah, and unfortunately I'm not one of them, were Moshe Shapiro's that Sal told me. They they chap the maral betam elyoin. And those who don't know Kabbalah, they chap the maral betam tachtoin, which is also a tam. He definitely did not write his form only to those who know Kabbalah, for sure not. But who were the rabbim of the maral? Particularly, that is very hard to know. He only once says in Jerusha Shabbos Agodol, kach kibalti mirabosai, but he doesn't call him by name. Do we, do we know where the Maral learned when he was younger? As, yes. As a child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that we know. He learned in the yeshiva of the Marshal. And in the halacha elements, we do know more or less the path that he went through. And the Der Chalimut, by the way, which he very much came out against, uh, you know, what, what we do today a little bit of kvetching on a, on a Gemara and knowing a, a Gemara only because Toysis quotes it, that he's very much against the Der Chalimut, which is pretty common today. He speaks about why don't we go back to what the Mishnah says in Prikei Avos and Chamesh and Migra and Esel and Mishnah, which the Zilberman Cheder does in the old city in Yerushalayim. Uh, uh, but who are his rabbim in this area uh, of what he's so known for? We don't know. Who are his Talmidim? Again, there were a few. The most famous one is the Toisus Yom Tev. And the Toisus Yom Tev the Maral was a very big Mishnah man. He was telling all his people to learn Mishnahis. And the Tursi Yom Tev wrote, writes in his introduction that I wrote this commentary because of my Rebbe. And then he says something which I don't know how he had the guts to say it. He said the contribution, the contribution to the learning of the Mishnah of my Rebbe, the Maral, is to some degree even greater to what Rebbe Yudah Anossi, the Tana did. Because the Maral is telling us to learn Mishnahis also as much as possible with their Havana. And then he quotes a Gemara and Elimitzias. And then he come, when I first saw it, I thought it's a typo. But then he goes back and says, That's what I told you that the contribution of the Maral to learning Mishnahis is maybe even greater than what Rabbi Yudah Nossi wrote, which is a, a massive statement. Uh, so again, who were his Rabbein? 
not clear. Who are his Talmidim that went on with his derech? The Tesiyam Tev Dinah. So he was like a lightning that existed in that time of the world. And then for over 200 years afterwards, his Svarim were not reprinted. The ones who rediscovered the morale are the Tassinim, especially the, the Pshischa Chassidus, which is Gur, uh, Sochachov, uh, 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 and the Abni Nezer, so on, like I mentioned before, that they didn't, the Abni Nezer would pass in Halachas based on the Maral and the Ganata. So we, we have, there's, there, there's no Perushim for 200 years, more or less, on the Maral's. The and, and all this, all the all the, the books as far are published during his lifetime, and we don't have this path down afterwards. Absolutely. It, really. It's manifested by the fact that it was not reprinted for over 215 years. That is a that's a long time. And, and, and what do the what do those Hasidim, what did they focus on in the Maral? Was it the overall Sfarim? Was there certain parts of it that they focused on? Again, they took it all, but but there were some there's some Hasidists that a little bit resented it, without mentioning names, because they want to say that Hasidus is all about bringing it down to the to the Hamon Am, and making Judaism accessible to everybody, to the the scholar and the layman. And here the Maral is taking again these concepts of Agalata and making it so deep. So we're back to it's only for the Talmud Chachamim. But uh, uh, Rabbi, the, the one Achron that really dealt with the Maral, a Goyen Oilam, and whenever he touched the Maral, he brought out and made it gold, is Rabbi Yosef Engel, the one who wrote the Esfan de Raisa, and the one who wrote Besa Oitzer. He says... And this Rome is Rome, when? What, what period of time are we talking about now? He, he died in 1919. Okay. And he, he, was, a, he was a Goyen Oilam in all fields of Torah. And he said that it's their halimud he got from the Maral and the Ramomi Pano. Those are the two that he pointed out. And part of my avoid was ours to find out is there a Yosef angle in this Maral? Because whenever there is, it's just fantastic. It's, his Kishrin with the Maral's Oymek is probably one of the best Shiduchim ever done in the history of mankind. And and then as we move on from let's call it the the nineteenth um, century, now we're moving into the twentieth century. You'd already mentioned Rav Dessler, obviously your Rosh Hashiva, Rav, Rav Hutner. Who else do we find that that start to write more extensively about the Maral, spread it, it, the Maral's Torah around more? Again, beyond the Oilam Hasidus, right? I, I think the first one you would say is Rav Cook, Rav Ramitz and Cook. Not that he wrote uh, specific on the morale, but uh, it was a tremendous mashmi on him, and he always encouraged people to learn it. I have a testimony that says that Sifre Maral were always on his table. And then... Uh, does, does this trace back already to Volusion, or we, we're not sure if this is something that... I, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think it does. Not that I know. And then came Rav Hutnazatzal, and almost in every mimer or quote of Maral and built on it. But before Rav Hutner was Rav Dessler and the Mikhtar Meliel, also a, a very big maven in Maral. And then later on, uh, the Talmudim of Rav Hutner, predominantly Rav Yonis and David Shlita and the Yeshivas Chaim Belen. And of course, Rav Moshe Shapir, Zatzal, who was Nifter just four or five years ago. His portrait is on the wall behind there. And he uh, he's someone that left over behind over 15,000 shiurim recorded. And he told me once, Kola ba My whole infrastructure came from the Maral. And he told me that when he was 16 years old, Rav Dessler gave him a gift, the Be'er Hagoyla of the Maral. And then he saw suddenly this, this world. I can tell that Rav Shmuel Orbach Zetzal, who's very much from the Shiva Sha'ilam, told me that when he was 16 years old, he's also the age of 16, interesting, he, he, he saw the Gu'ari and he couldn't stop learning it. Kol Yemei 
And I remember when I went over to him and asked him to give me a, a letter of appropriation, a skoma, I thought for sure he'll tell me no. Because I, he only gave us skomas to his Talmudim. I never learned by him. I was a little bit mishpacha, but I never learned by him. And, and he said, yeah, for the Mara, of course he give us skoma. Do, do, do we find um, in the writings of Chabad, Maharal thought and thinking? Well, here comes it. Now, again, I'm not enough of a maybe in the writings of Chabad. In the Sefer Tanya, it said it's Malukat in the beginning, we sferm the Seferim. And the Rebbe said that Svarim and Svarim means Maharal and Shla. But in the whole Sefer Tanya, he doesn't quote the Maharal once. Apilu Pamachat. So was he a, a, a was he a very influential factor? I'm sure he was, but he's not quoted that much. The Sfasemes will quote the Maral very often. The Shem Shmuel, <laughs> every page. Uh, in the Lubavitcher literature, I'm not aware that he's quoted that much, even though they very much connect themselves to the Maral. Uh, the Yorks of the Maral is Chai Elul, coming up. And um, and uh, and the Rebbe was born, the Balatani was born in Chai Elul. And then when Rav Hutner Zatzal was in captivity in Jordan in 1970, it was Chai Elul. And the, the Lubavitch Rebbe said, someone who's kochzach with the term of the morale, he'll see Yeshua's. And, and, and so was, it was. And so it was. What? And so it was. And so it was. Oh, Hashem. What was the Maharal's approach um, regarding Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, and the idea of redemption, Geula, in Jewish history? Okay, he, he wrote a whole sefer on that called Natsach Yisrael. Uh, by him, Eretz Yisrael is definitely one of the pillars of who we are and our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The, the explained the Chazal that the true place of doing mitzvahs is only in Eretz Yisrael. And we do mitzvahs and chutzar, it's like the Ramban says, to get ready. And uh, the Eretz Yisrael is the country that unites Am Yisrael into one nation. And we became totally uh, a raving zebaze. Says the Grand Sanhedrin, only once we cross, we cross the Jordan River. That's the Grand Sanhedrin. And then I will explain it. Uh, uh, he speaks about Eretz Yisrael very, very often <clears throat> and the role that Eretz Yisrael plays and the abnormality of goluses that were not in Eretz Yisrael. And in Netzach Yisrael, Per Cafe, he literally goes on his knees and begs the Kaddish Bochel, please bring me to Eretz Yisrael. But he wasn't zeichet to it. He's buried till today in Prague. About the redemption, he, he speaks about the Geula, Again, the Sefer Netzach Yisrael is divided to those two parts, the Golos and the Geula. Uh, the first 25 chapters are about the Golos. The next uh, um, 38 chapters, something like that, are about the Geula. But he does not advocate pushing Geula or activating it. Uh, the Satma Rebbe, the Dibra Yoel, Rabbi Yoel Shatzal, <laughs> used to bring a lot of rise to his Shita, from the morals explaining in Netzach Yisrael Perik Kavdalet, the way he explains the Gimbal Shvuas. There are other ways how to learn the morale also, but he did not speak about the Lemaisa part, not at all, but the concept of what Geula means. Uh, maybe I can bring an example. The morale says there's three abnormalities in Golos. Abnormality number one is that we're not in our place. We're not in Eretz Yisrael. Abnormality number two, okay, we're not in Eretz Yisrael. Let's all be together in Brooklyn or in Golders Green. Why are we dispersed? A family sticks together. Why are we dispersed? That's abnormality number two. And abnormality number three, every individual, this he said way before the French Revolution, every individual and Kabachoma, every nation, was created to be free and created to be in their own cemetery, under their own cemetery, and we are subjugated to the goyim, and they tell us what to do. The so the yitzia mina makom is abnormality number one, 
the pizor as abnormality number two, and the shibud being subjugated as abnormality number three. And then he proves from Chazal that the process of Geula will be by removing one by one these abnormalities. When Moshe Shapir Zetzal said something so gewaldic based on this, where do in Shmon Eswe do we daven of the removal of Golos? What would you say, Rabari? The Al Yisrael. The Kabbalah for Golos, right? Okay. Kabbalah. Right, uh, and look, look at the at that. Sam David, perhaps. Okay, but the, the bringing Am Yisrael, there's there's a fill on it, and there's three parts for it. Tkab b'shor for Godol lecherusenu, v'sad neis lekabetz in the chenu, lekabtzenu yachad ma'ar b'kamfes ha'aretz nusach svar adds la'rutzenu. Bochat Hashem lekabetz nitrei Am Yisrael. Said Reb Moshe Zatzal, these three requests are exactly corresponding. To the three abnormalities which the Maral pointed out. We should be free. We shouldn't be Meshubat. That's removal of that abnormality. The son nice. The Kabetzi Bring it together into one place. That's removal of the Pizor. The Kapzenu Yachad. Ma'aba Kamfers Aretz. The Artzenu. Back to Eretz Israel. That's Emes Lamita. And by the way, if we look at history, that is the process we're going through. Today, probably almost everywhere in the world, Jews can practice their religion openly. I'm not aware of any place in the world which they are, where Jews are being persecuted because of, of their religion, because of the religion. We are more local, centered in like major centers, Israel, America. And we're La'at La'at coming back to Eretz Yisrael. Apparently that is the sequence of the Geula. And once Ramon Shapiro enlightened us, look, Avinu Malkeinu Galek Kvod Machus Chaleinu B'mheira, in the Shosh we're going, you should become our king, no, uh, no foreigners. The Kanes Nefutzaseinu Miyarke Se'aretz, let's stop being scattered. The Kapitzenu Yachad, the Tzion Ir Chabarina, back to Eretz Yisrael. Oh, Once you. you notice this, you'll see it, these fingerprints of this process, almost in every time we speak about removal of the Golos, removal of the Shibud, removal of the Pizor, and back to Eretz Yisrael. Rav Harbert, what does an English speaker do to... Right, before the next question, isn't Please. it Kavaldic? It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, it's 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 it's, it's the it's a kind it's a kind of Torah that once you hear it, you know, you say it's so obvious, it's it's so clear. I should have thought of it, but you need someone to bring it out and you know and 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 show it to you. By the way, where Ben Shapiro that's all would do that a lot. Take a sort of the Maral and show how it appears here, there, and everywhere. You know, Rav Hutner called the Maral Ma'or Eneinu. Ma'or Eneinu means the, the, how do you say it in English? Ma'or Eneinu, the light of our eyes. Which means, Rav Ernest and David explain it, the Maral gives you a new pair of glasses and now you see everything in a different way. He spoke about maybe one place locally, but it's always a message beyond its location. It's a message for life. It's a message how you look at things. And it's all about, at the end of the day, of your, our relationship with the Kodesh Baal. Before we get to the question of um, um, that, that I mentioned before, um, the statement um, regarding the Maral's writings uh, that I saw, uh, the hidden in the language of the revealed, what does that mean? It's what I said before, that he... He speaks about Kabbalistic concepts in a, in a philosophical way. For example, not knowing anything about the Kabbalah, but everybody knows about Nitzotzois and about Kalipos, the Ram will never mention it. But he will mention it in his language. About He'ader and Mitzius and so on and so forth. So the Maral is taking Kabbalistic concepts 
And Bera Gola Bera Ravi says, all what I'm saying is coming from that world. But he brought it out in a, he, he made up his own language to a certain degree. And, um, and he's always very particular to reveal a bit, but then to cover it that much more afterwards. And he's always, in the Sefer Bera Gola specifically, he's like, Damon Stashem, I hope I won't reveal too much but enough that people can understand. And whatever I'll reveal, I hope I'll be able to conceal afterwards a hundred times more in those kind of those kind of tefillas. English speakers, um, aside from learning Hebrew well, Lashon Kodesh, and delving into Rav Hartman, all of your svarim, what do you recommend to English speakers? How can they get a taste and even more than a taste? a bit of a depth of the Maharal. That's a very good point. Uh, lately, there's been a few interesting chidushim on that. In fact, uh, a, a very chosh of a year in New York, Remendel Rachel, who was very into learning the Maharal, <clears throat> asked Rabbi Brown, uh, Daniel Brown, to write a sefer, and it's literally called A Taste of the Maharal. Mm, okay. That's its name. <laughs> And he did, a, according to the Parshir Sashabua in English, a very fine job. Also, there are those who translated here and there. And art school was translated in the Siva Torah in English. I understand now the Siva Avoida about davening is going to be translated in English. There's a set the, uh, the insights in the Gu'ari were written in English or available. Uh, there's a Sefer Bera Goyla again written years ago by uh, Rabbi Edelstein from Los Angeles in English. It's here and there. It's not yet across the board, but it's being done. It's being done lately. The last 20, 30 years, uh, the, 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 there was a major breakthrough on that area. Prof. Hartman, what's, what's next on, on your radar, on the Maharal radar, which I, I think you had mentioned that you're you're with the Maharal till the end. That that's you know I may have okay. answered him, but 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 what 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 what's next on 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 your uh... on, my, on my personal agenda? I I'm, I'm doing. I forgot to mention before after the ninth swarm that he mentioned. There's five drushes that the Maharal uh, uh, Shabbos Chua, Shabbos Agadol, Drusha Latayra, Drusha La Mitzvahs, and a Hesped. I'm now in the midst. I'm. I published uh, the last two years, two volumes, one, the Shabbos Gadol Drasha, and one, Drusha Latayra. Yeah, I could show it to the Oilam. This is on um, Shabbos Gadol, pretty fat. And then that was volume Aleph. Here's volume Bet, Drusha Latayra. And now I'm currently doing the next three. That will be one volume, Drusha Amitzvahs, Shabbos Chuba and a Hesped. Um, he said many, many more drushes. How can we have only five kept for the subsequent generations? I do not know. In fact, the Tosis Yomtov in the Durham Perik Yud in the Mishnah quotes a, a drush of a Maral about the word Orus. How can we not say Ores and, and Mosur? Why don't you say Moiser? And it doesn't appear in our drushes. So obviously he said more drushes than five, uh, but we have only five of them. And it's hard to believe that he said such a drush on one on one Shabbos afternoon. It, it, it's really mind-boggling. I mean, like the eight Shabbos should is that Shabbos probably, right? So how did he say all of it? Okay, so I, my my next volume, Be'ez Hashem, is that last volume on the drushes. Two already came out. That will be the third one on that. And then I have to finish the Nesibus Oilam. I published out of the 33, I published only two. The biggest one is Siva Torah and the Siva Chuba, but there's another 31 to go. But a lot of them are very short, are very short. <clears throat> After that, I will have to make a major decision if I'm going to go into the Chidusha Agodis, again, which was published in the 50s, and go through that. Because a lot of people tell me that's the most convenient way to get to, to do it. You learn that Gemara, you're in Adaf, you're learning Adaf Yomi. I want to know what the Maral says on this. I got it though. So if you have knowledge in Sifri Amara, you can look it up. And if you don't, where will I find it? 
<clears throat> let's say today we're starting Kiddushin, the Daf So mm-hmm. there's a characters in Kiddushin. Where's the one speak about them? So from the efficiency point of view, it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, I got to decide if I'll do it or not. I also have a dream, and then I even spoke with the Rosh Shapiro's at Sal, when he was obviously still alive, of publishing the morale based on topics and issues like the morale on Shabbos, mm-hmm. the morale on Tefillin. He wrote so much about Tefillin. The morale on Tzitzes and Mezuzah. The morale on Brismila. The morale on being Jewish. Uh, the, the, these topics, I, I have a big Yetzirah to do that, maybe even before I'll go to the Chidush Goddess. But as you pointed out, it says it's a zgula for Rikus Yamim to take upon yourself to write the, the Sifri Maral, because the, there's more words in Sifri Maral without the Chidush Goddess than Shas. Wow. Okay. Um, final final thoughts to to our listeners and viewers. To you know, we're standing on one foot. You've given us, uh, Rabbi Hartman, a few, of just a taste of Yisodot. What should we do next? I, I don't have an exact way what to say, but I, I could just point out that today in the world, what the moral has to offer, that's exactly what we need. Especially with teenagers and so on. Apathy, unfortunately, is the name of the game. And uh, having a passion of who we are and what we are, and why is it so special to be Jewish? If you ask any any person for that, come home, any teenager, tell me what's so great about being Jewish. I think they would struggle to explain it. What what do we have? And the the goal is that to do things with as much as we could understand, we cannot understand everything, but to have a, a real grip on what on what mitzvahs are, what is Torah, what does the Yid mean? Uh, the Chofetz Chaim would say, the Holy Chofetz Chaim would say, that if you have like boiling hot water, boiling, but once you start pouring it to Kli Rishon, it cools off a little bit. And then from the Kli Rishon to Kli Shani, it will cool off more. So if Judaism is, by my Zaini, was hot water, and then we're now pouring it from one generation to another, by definition, it's going to cool off once you reach generation number four or five. The only way to stop this process of cooling off is not giving over the water from one generation to another, the heated water, but the fire itself. That's the only way to do it. Fire doesn't cool off. And that's what the Ra is doing with this one, giving us the fire, understanding, for example, Birkas Hanenin. Is it really... Like going to the candy man and she'll saying thank you. You know, I want to get a, a candy from the a, a man and she'll as a kid. I'll tell him, thank you, please. He'll give me the candy. Is that what it means, boy or Where do you say thank you in boy or You're acknowledging that because who created the apple. That's all what you're doing. How does that work? And here the man will tell you that totally different outlook. It's not saying please. Can I get it? Not at all. That's not what the bracha does. And the Siva Abayda Paragadal will tell you that the, the apple's holy. It's hegdish, like the Gemara says. You can't use it without a bracha. The, the bracha redeems it. The bracha is offering a substitute to what the apple was doing till now. Till now, the apple, in a subtle way, was praising Hashem and the way it got the right color and the right time and so on. And now you come with your free will and with your power of speech and you praise Hashem for the apple. The apple now could be dismissed and now you can have it. It's a different outlook almost on everything that we do. It just makes it so much more geschmack. Now, I would offer something else. And here, yes. I'm, I, I, here it's a little risky, but I'm going to do it. On Sunday night, the 3rd of September, is Yud Chesel. It's another, another like 20 days. Today, right? Today's Tuesday. And three weeks minus two days. 
we are going to be meeting in the Altenoy Shul in Prague at midnight. And we're going to be staying up all night in the Altenoy Shul. I do have the Buch the connection so they open up the Shul whenever I want to go in. It's usually closed, obviously, throughout the night. Mm -hmm. That night it will be open. We're going to be learning the Torah of the Maharal till Vasikin, then go to the Adam and Shachris, and go to the Maral's Kever. And now the point is, it's being done before it's open to the public. Unfortunately, the shul is a museum today. When you walk there when in the opening hours, you don't feel it so much. When you're there at nights, and I was there many times with Rabbi Shapira alone, man noiva hamokamaze. You mamish feel the gdusha; it's tangible. Then to go to the kever the maral when it's still closed to the public, so we're yitten there. We say to him, "That's that's how you do it. Not you just go by and all kinds of funny things. Up to a certain number, we could we could we could do it. If um, if a hundred people want to come, that will be a little bit of a problem. But if 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 some want to come, I don't know when this will be available. This podcast." Uh, if we'll we, put it up right away, the podcast part of it, right away. Right away. Uh, I can give you my email address, which I gave you already before. Okay, so you already have it. If you do want to come, you just got to be at the Altnoy Shul at midnight. Wow. At Sunday night. And what's so special about it? Let me, I forgot to say the main part. It's the yard set of the moral. It's Chayel. 12 days before Rosh Hashanah. Is there a better way how to... Get ready for Rosh Hashanah. You know, it's known in the Sifre Hasidus that from then on, it's 12 days left of Rosh Hashanah. Each day is corresponding to another month. So we're going to be there. And the Altnoi Shul. Inside the Shul. Learning the Torah of the Maharal. We'll be get divided into Chavrusas. And then we're going to be learning. We'll dance a little. But we're going to we're gonna keep the Minagamokam. And uh, we're going to dive in there with Sikin. Someone that wants to take a break at night and cannot stay up the whole night. There's hotels in the, nearby, the Vakasha. It's not being organized by any one person. Just each person takes care of himself. But I do have to know in advance who's okay. coming because with the security, it was already worked out. I have to give the names in advance, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So the first, we're, we're, we're already going to be 20. The next 20 that want to come are invited to do so. After that, I don't think we'll be able to handle it. Okay. We will try to get the word out as best we can. Um, maybe, maybe, Rabbi, are you yourself want to come? Okay. I, I, I have been there, but this sounds very different from what I experienced there. Um, okay. It, 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 it's really two different things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when it's absolutely. open to the public. Bao Pritzi Mechilalua. Women are not dressed with sneers. It's just not. Right. They don't have a clue who the Maral was. Okay. Okay. So again, Rav Hartman, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate um, your time today. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to wish everyone who's here listening and to call Cloud Israel, it should be a Ksiba of Chasima Toiva and a good Gebench de Yor and all the Yisurdis of the Maral pretending the Geula. Let's hope we'll see it as quickly as possible with our own eyes. Tavshim Peidalit may be Rashi Tevis. And a good gebench to all Amisrael. Amen. Thank you again so much. Thank you.